What's up, everybody? It's Miranda Alcaraz, and this is episode number 19 of the More Than Nothing podcast. This is the first episode I'm actually recording in the new year in 2020. Last year, we did a little, or last week, we did a little repeat of the very first episode, which I hope you guys listen to because uh, it's just, I think it's got some really great stuff in there to get your mind set for where we all are kind of mentally when starting a new year. It's so funny because really any day can be, any moment can be the start of a new you or a new mindset or something like that. But in general, everybody comes together on January 1st or in the beginning of a new year and decides that this year is going to be different. So hopefully you listened to that episode. Today we're going to talk about, and this year what I want to do, see even I'm doing new things in the new year. What I want to do is give you guys little weekly challenges, something that I want you to take away and there'll be some some little uh, test or task or list or something to write down um, to kind of help you guys apply some of the stuff that I'm thinking about and that I'm reading about and talking about on the podcast to your actual lives and your goals because we're not all the same and sometimes maybe the examples that I use are not exactly applicable to your life, but the concepts I think can apply to anyone in any situation. So today, uh, I got thinking about the most important thing when it comes to changing anything is our belief system. What do you believe? Now, usually when that question comes up, it's like the dramatic answers, right? It's like whether or not you believe in God and whether or not you believe in heaven or hell or your political beliefs or this or that. And those are like these like deep questions or super debatable hot topics. And when people ask, what do you believe? They're usually really strong things that come up first. But if you think about it, if you really think about it, everything that shapes our reality comes from our beliefs to the tiniest little things. So our habits are all shaped by our beliefs. The decisions that we make are shaped by our beliefs. How we parent our children, whether or not we have children, whether or not we want children, whether or not we like children (laughs) are shaped by our beliefs. Um, How we view ourselves are shaped by our beliefs and the things that we've picked up and learned about ourselves or been told about ourselves along the way and believed. Um, How we view others the types of people that we like to hang out with, the types of people that we don't, the types of whatever, cultures that we appreciate or don't or whatever are all tied back to things that we believe about those groups or those individuals or whatever. Um, Everything, everything can be tied back to a belief. So I think the most important thing, because if you listen to the podcast last year, I talked a lot about this book, um, Atomic Habits, Atomic Habits by James Clear, and he talks about habit change comes from identity change, and that identity and what we think of ourselves comes from our belief system. So at this time of year, we're all about changing habits, and we're we're getting we're gonna work out five times a week, and we're gonna change our nutrition, and we're gonna you know read more, or we're gonna whatever sleep more, but the All of those habits come first from a belief. Why we're not doing those things already, we've got to dig into that. And identifying ourselves as the type of person who would do those things is the most important key to lasting change, is what he talks about in that book. And I think it's really important to look into. Um, Now, most some beliefs, some I will say, but very few beliefs are facts. Okay, so I don't even want to necessarily list what facts are, but maybe maybe this would be an actual fact. We, as human beings, need to sleep to live. We need to eat to live and we need water to live. Like those are some basic facts. Most of what we believe though, the vast majority is our stories that we've been told or we've told ourselves or things that we've learned along the way. Um, most of our beliefs are a product of our environment, where we grew up, our family, Um, our friends, our social circles, the country that we were born and grew up in, the culture, the religion that we came from, the friends that we had when we were younger, the TV shows that we watched, um, that we've watched throughout our lives, what we've read, the magazines that we've looked at, um, 
all of that has shaped what our beliefs are today. Uh, And that is why when you go on Instagram or social media, people will argue and they so believe they are right. And no one necessarily is really right or wrong most of the time. It's it's hard for people to see each other's point of view because everybody's point of view is different because everybody's life, day-to-day, minute-to-minute life has been different. And so their beliefs are are going to be different. Um, We also, you know, we gain our beliefs from school growing up, what we learned in school. And that can be like a really big one. That's a really fun one when all of a sudden something's debunked. So when I was thinking about belief systems and uh, trying to get you guys into a space where you can challenge the things that you believe about yourself or about other people or about this or that, I want you to remember that there was a time that people believed with their entire being that the world was flat, okay? And no one would have, no one was questioning it. A few people questioned it, a few people challenged it, and it completely changed everything. But for the most part, people just, they were told that the world was flat and that was it. And then they just made sure not to fall off of it, (laughs) right? Um, And those types of things, uh, the four minute mile was impossible until a couple people challenged it. Flight, airplanes, impossible until a couple people challenged it. These are big ones. But what I'm going to encourage you guys to do this week is to challenge even the small ones that might be keeping you in a place that you don't want to be. Um, Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you got your beliefs from. Uh, It matters how they're affecting your ability to live the life that you want to live and to be happy. I'm going to talk mostly about negative beliefs, but there are some beliefs that uh, most people have that affect them very positively. I, for example, a positive belief, I was told at a very young age that I was smart. Um, I don't know if I was smart or not. Maybe I just had a good teacher. Maybe I was just having a good couple of months in kindergarten, who knows, but I believed it. And that has helped me on my path my entire life because I acted as if that was true. Now we've all heard or we've known people who have the opposite has happened to them. Julian is a great example of this. In school, he was told that he was like the athletic one. His brother, his older brother was very smart. He was told he was was smart. He was put in like, you know, the higher learning classes. And Julian was told that he, you know, had a hard time paying attention and he he couldn't sit down to read books. And so he, he should just not worry about that as much and dive into the athletics. He was very athletic, which is, and he was told, that he was so, so he followed that and he did very well. However, just this past year, Julian realized if he listened to books on audio, he could really focus. I mean, I'm talking, he can sit there on the couch for hours and listen to an audio book and take notes. If he had it to read in front of him, he would, it would be easy for him to lose attention. But that's just one example of he had given up until he was 30 years old on learning from books because he was told at a young age that he was not good at reading. Um, So we gotta find those things and really hold on to the positive ones, but let's start to find those negative beliefs. Because what can happen when we have a belief uh, is we, we tend to find what we're looking for, all right? So if you believe that you don't have time to exercise. You will find other people who agree with you. You will commiserate with them and you will all complain together. And it's not an excuse necessarily because for most people it is very hard, difficult to find time, but we want to strengthen our beliefs typically. When we have a belief, typically we, we like to find others who believe the same thing. It's why you tend to be friends with people who have your same religious background or beliefs or your same political beliefs more often than people who believe something different. A challenge that we should all have is to find people outside of our belief system and try to learn, but it can be uncomfortable. Okay, so um, we pile up evidence to back up our belief systems too. So you'll say like, oh, I don't have time to to exercise. 
and then you'll list all the things that you have and all the things that are taking away your time and you'll pile up evidence. See, this day, I didn't even get to do this. And this day, how could I find this? Instead of looking for something that would tell you that your belief is wrong, typically we look for ways to solidify our belief system. So that's just one example. So this week, the challenge for you guys is going to be, what are your beliefs that, and before we go into that, because I don't, I don't need you questioning your entire life this <laughs> next week. Let's talk about what maybe goals or resolutions that you made for the new year. Write those down. And then write down all of the reasons that you haven't achieved those things so far. Those are your beliefs. Okay. So the very first thing is you need to find out what your beliefs are. Okay. So I want to lose 20 pounds. Okay, we've talked in other episodes about why, understanding why you want to do that. We're, we're going to skip that part for today. But let's talk about why, ha, why aren't you at that weight right now? And I want you to be very honest. You don't have to show this to anyone. Write down all the reasons that you believe that you are already not at that weight. I had a baby, okay? That might have a little bit of facts in, <laughs> mixed in there, okay? Unless your baby's five years old. And then, you know, we got to talk about that. Um, I traveled a lot this year. So that's why I wasn't able to lose weight. I don't have a supportive spouse. I, this, whatever, my genetics make it hard for me. I am addicted to ice cream. I don't know. Whatever reasons that you can list and be very honest, those are your beliefs. Okay. Um, then I want you to look at that list and think, where did these beliefs come from? Is the belief something that you were told growing up is the belief something that you picked up on watching the Dr. Oz show? Have, do you actually know for sure if your husband or your spouse is um, supportive or do you just assume that's going to be the case? So where did they come from? Are these beliefs black and white? And what do I need to do to start changing that belief or at least challenging it a little bit? Let me give you a few examples. Um, for some beliefs that I've had throughout my life and we can kind of talk about so you can see some examples of what I want you guys to do this week with your beliefs. When I was roughly, I don't know, maybe 13 years old, um, and I've told this story before, but I was in my mom's bedroom and she had stepped on the scale in her bathroom. 13 year old girl, it's very, you're very susceptible to things at this time. My mom got on the scale and she said, uh, I'm 140 pounds. I'm so fat. 13 years old, boom, 140 pounds equals fat. I believe that now when I'm 13, right? And, and so for me, that triggered a, if I, the scale says over 140, that means you're fat, <laughs> okay? And for a long, long time, that was true to me. And it didn't matter what body composition it was or what I saw in the mirror, that day, a belief was set into, and she didn't even know I was there. I think she was like talking out loud to herself. It was in my brain that 140 pounds equals being fat. So that might be something where if I was still to this day holding on to it, which luckily I'm not, but at some point I had to look at that and be like, where did this come from? Like, where did I get that belief? Oh yeah, it's when my mom was in the, on the bathroom scale. And then I asked myself, okay, um, is that, is that tr true? Is that like a black and white fact? Is one well, No, that can't be true because I know people that are 140 pounds and look a certain way and then 140 pounds that look another way. Like that can't be, it's not a black and white fact. No, definitely not. What can I do to start to challenge that is I can start to understand more about body composition and, and that sort of thing and, and all of that. But at some point I had to go through that process to get rid of that belief for myself. Another example, when I was in junior high, this <laughs> probably like piggybacked off the first one, to be honest. My friends and I believed that fat made you fat, as most of you listening at some point believed that eating fat made you fat. So what we did is we ordered cheeseless pizza and we ate um, candy, but fat-free candy, and, you know, drank Diet Coke and the whole thing. As long as there was no fat in it, it was 100% fine. So it was just 
crazy high in sugar, but fat is what we truly believed, probably from watching some random episode of Oprah or reading some fitness magazine or whatever. It's like in the 90s, okay? Um, At some point, obviously, I've gotten to where I started questioning that belief, right? It's like, okay, where did I get that? Well, mainstream media is where I got that. And the message that was being given at the time is where I got that. And it's like, well, is that a black and white fact? At some point in my journey as a fitness and nutrition coach and trainer, the education that I gained started to get me to challenge that. And actually, I think where I started challenging it the most was when I wanted to compete in like a fitness competition, like a bodybuilding type show, which leads me to my next belief that I had. This was more like um, college-ish. My genetics won't allow me to be lean. No one in my family's lean. Um, I've never been super lean before. So clearly it's just not like, that's just not how my body is. And so I can't. And luckily the group and the social circle, because I did like to exercise, I just had never been lean enough to com- to stand on stage in a bikini and have somebody decide <laughs> how good I looked or not. I'd never been lean enough to do that. I was fit and I was active, but bodybuilding, fitness, lean, no way. Genetics, not going to happen. Uh, someone encouraged me to challenge that. Have you tried changing your diet? No, but just nobody in my family. But have you tried this, this, this? No, but like I just, there's, I can't even picture someone in my family who's ever looked like that. So many of you listening to this right now have this belief. My genetics won't allow me to X, Y, Z. It's not in my genes to X, Y, Z. My parents' bodies look like this, so my body is destined to look like X, Y, Z. Now, there is, of course, some level of truth to that. You can't make yourself taller. I can't make myself, you know, be 5'10". I can't make myself have Molly Vollmer's legs, okay? Um, But I... I don't know how true or not true that is until I challenge it and what my actual potential is. So at some point you've got to, I had to challenge that. And um, it's now like people laugh when they hear this story, but this was when I was like 20 years old. I still had that belief. Um, Some other beliefs that I've had that I've challenged over the years is women. Um, I grew up in a culture where women are meant to be moms and homemakers. And it's not that that's not true or that it's false. It's an, it's a choice, right? Um, but that was a very cultural thing where, oh, this is what you do when you get older and it's just, it's the right thing to do. And for me, um, it, that was a very difficult one for me to ask, like, where did I get this? Well, it's from the religion that I grew up in, the, in the culture that I grew up in, in the family that I grew up in. That's what we did. But is that, like, true? Is that what all that... I'm capable of doing or is that what I need to do to be happy or is that what um, my husband should expect from me? Is that a true belief or is that just an opinion? It's definitely an opinion. And so that one was a really hard one for me to challenge. It took some time and still there's there's traces of that one still um, because it was so deep rooted. Another one that I had growing up was uh, you, when you get older, you just get fat. <laughs> Like it was, that was a fact that was, oh, well, yeah. And again, so many of you listening to this right now, believe that when you pass a certain age, you just get fat. Now, is it, does your metabolism change? Is that a fact? Sure. Is it harder to just like pound crappy food and work out and have them kind of like balance each other out? Sure. Is it just a fact that once you pass the threshold of 30 that you're destined to just be chubby? Mm, I don't, that is not definitely not a fact. And there's definitely a lot more to that. So that's where it's like, where did I get this? Well, when I was growing up in the culture that I was in, that's kind of how everyone was. But then what happened for me was when I found um, specifically the uh, community of the CrossFit community, and I moved out of Salt Lake City, Utah, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. There's there's like these like 50-year-old, 40, 50-year-old women who are like still looking really fit, like fitter than a lot of 25-year-olds that I know. Like this is challenging what I've believed in. And so 
These are the things that I want you guys to start writing down. So again, what you're going to do, you're going to write down your goals. Some of them might be fitness. Some of them might be uh, personal relationship goals. Some of them might be, you know, stuff that you want to learn or just improve. Um, Sleep is a big one for me that I've talked about a lot on the podcast and a lot on my personal page, and it's a struggle for me. I believe still that I'm a night person because my mom's a night person and my sister's a night person and my family's a night person and I've always just been a night person. And maybe that's true, but I haven't done a good enough job of challenging that and do like sticking to going to bed earlier and waking up earlier for long enough to say that that's been proven. It's just what I've believed. And a lot of times we latch onto a belief to strengthen an excuse. So for me, I'm a night person. Oh, I just, I can't help it. I got to stay up till 11 because that's comfortable for me. It's what I'm used to. And going to bed earlier and waking up earlier is uncomfortable. So I would rather just say that it is a fact that I am a night person and there's nothing I can do about it than to challenge that and be uncomfortable for long enough to decide if that's actually true or not. You guys see kind of where I'm going for that? I don't like broccoli. I can't eat vegetables. I don't like them. I don't, I didn't grow up eating vegetables. I don't know about you guys, but veggies were not commonly served at my house. So it's very easy for me to say, I don't like them. I don't like veggies. Specifically, I don't like broccoli. I can't do it. So I'm not, I'm not a veggie person. Just can't do it. Have you challenged that? Have you tried different vegetables? Have you tried cooking them a different way? Have you tried, I don't know, pureeing them or doing something, adding them into your sweet potatoes or have you really challenged that belief or is it just something that you're like, tried it once, didn't like it, not for me? That's where most people, that's about as far as most people get in challenging their beliefs. And so um, what are you willing to challenge? So write your list, write your list of goals, write the reasons that you don't have those things right now, and then go through and say, which of these am I willing to challenge? I'm not, of course, asking you guys to challenge your <laughs> religious beliefs or some of those things. I mean, I do think that there is some merit in challenging literally everything. Um, But for right now, just what am I willing to challenge? Am I willing to challenge the fact that um, I hate exercise? Am Am I willing to try different things or am I willing to exercise for long enough to see if I can get past the place where I don't like it? Because usually... Again, you'll try it for one week or two weeks or one time or two times or three weeks. but And then you're just like, nope, you chose one type of exercise, did it in one environment, and you decided exercise is not for me. Can't do it. That's not what we're looking for here, okay? Um, some of the things that we hear most commonly, obviously, when it comes to fitness is my genetics. I don't like to exercise. I don't have time. I'm too old, I had an injury, or there, I don't like certain foods, or I don't like to eat at all, or I don't like to, whatever, there's a lot of food ones, you guys know what they are. You're going to write them down, and you're going to challenge those things, and you're going to try different things, but the very first thing that we need to recognize, what are your beliefs, where did they come from, is this a black and white fact? Or is this something that you're capable of challenging? That's the task for this week. Next week, we're going to talk a little bit about small steps, not over the top steps to start to challenge these things and reframe the way you look at results. So we'll talk about how with the genetics thing where, yeah, if you're trying to look like a certain person that's like a completely different body type than you, and that's how you decide if you have the genetics to X, Y, or Z, We'll talk about that. But this week, the most important thing, why don't you have it? Are those things actually real facts? Are you willing to challenge those things? Because until you figure out that all of the choices that you make, all of the habits that you have, all of the things you have or have not achieved come from what you believe about yourself, about the situation, about what you would need to do or not do in order to achieve those things, you've got to understand where those deep-rooted beliefs are coming from and be ready to be a little uncomfortable in challenging them. I hope you guys are having a great 2020 so far and make those lists, share them with me on IG if you're comfortable or, you know, put them in your story 
And we'll talk about moving forward and challenging those beliefs next time.